Hey guys, in today's video we are checking out the new version 6 of the Exodos project. So what is Exodos? Well, at first glance it's a collection of over 7000 MS-DOS games with a nice launcher for easy navigating and searching. There's an optional media pack with soundtracks, game magazines, newsletters and books. But there's much more to it. Behind this project is EXO. He started working on this in 2007 when he was getting frustrated with trying to get some of the classic games to work on modern machines. So he started putting together some adventure games as a pack and then the project grew into what we have today. Version 6 recently launched, it was in the news and yeah, it got my attention. It's my first time checking out this project and the more I was interacting with it, the more impressed I was. The attention of detail that each game received really impressed me. So many games come in multiple versions and formats and what I really like is that the Exodus project is focused on gaming. So you don't have to worry about interrupts and different sound cards and configuring memory options. You just want to play the game and this project delivers exactly on that. But it goes into enough depth and detail that maybe you heard of a Roland MT32 or you know the difference between EGA and VGA and yeah, when you launch the game, it simply asks you what version do you want to play without you having to touch any configuration. EXO has a YouTube channel and I highly recommend checking it out. I've been binge watching his videos the last few weeks and it gives you a good idea of yeah what he's about and the origins of this project. This video is one I recommend, the origin story, but he also shares really interesting stories about his life and specific games. For example, this one here about the CompUSA software wraps. I enjoyed that one. And the one about Spellcasting 101. This is the website where you can download Exodos. And there is a bit of information here that I recommend you read. Here are some of the features that version 6 adds compared to version 5. I highly recommend reading the user manual and there are some screenshots here and here are the download links. It's a massive download. You will need a torrent software and together with the media pack it was over 800 gigabytes. There's also a light version which is much smaller and it will download the games on demand but for the purpose of this video I downloaded the offline version which includes everything without having to go online again. The installation is pretty straightforward. There's a setup batch file that you need to run. It does take some time, especially if you also downloaded the optional media pack, the extraction of all the files. Well, it does take some time, but once it's done, we are ready to go. At the end of the installation, you can choose the global configs. These apply to all the games, but each game also has its own configuration so it's very easy to override them. Let's have a quick look at the user manual and I will point out a few highlights. This section is really interesting if you're not familiar with some of the technical aspects especially when it comes to sound. So here he explains the difference between the PC speaker which is a single voice whereas with the Tandy you get three voices and the first Space Quest game is a good example. EXO has configured the game to run in Tandy mode so you will get superior three voice music. I have a demonstration here. The Roland MT32 is also supported and you don't need to hunt down any Roland emulators or ROM files. Everything is already set up ready to go. I also found the video modes section very interesting. A brief overview of all the different graphics options that you might come across when playing DOS games and here are some thumbnails to give you an idea. Let's launch Exodus and we can see it's using LaunchBox as the main launcher. Here it is 
initializing and setting everything up. And there we go. So lots of options going on here. And in the beginning, well, I wasn't playing any games at all. I was actually playing around with the media pack. For example, under audio, we get, yeah, CD audio tracks. So for example, if you want to check out uh, Dune, let's double click and it has an integrated player. These files are in the FLAC format and we can listen to some really nice soundtracks. There is one I really appreciated, the Wing Commander one. Um, I remember Origin promoting sort of the MT32, but unless you had a friend who had an MT32, you never were able to really get a good taste. So at some point, yeah, they released a audio CD and then finally I got a glimpse of what the game could sound like with a Roland MT32. Under literature, we find something really interesting. And I had a blast just going back in time and checking out these covers of some classic books. A lot of them are about DOS, but also programming, gaming, uh, programming if you're interested in that sort of aspect. And one I really liked is the Sound Blaster, the official book. So it's a PDF file, really high quality scans. And yeah, this book, look at that. It covers all sorts of aspects about the Sound Blaster, the different versions, the 2.0, the Pro, the Sound Blaster 16, the jumper settings, the software and so on. So yeah, you can spend days here just checking out these books. MS-DOS catalogs is also a very interesting section and I just want to show you, you can sort the information here under arrange by. So let's go and sort it by release date. And then I want to find something from the late 80s. Let's have a look. There are so many. Here's one. Look at that. Sierra anniversary. I really like this one because Sierra not only uh, published, promoted, sold games, but also hardware. And I love my hardware. So let's scroll down. I think there's an order form where we can order some games. And if you look here, Adlib music sound card, we've got the Game Blaster and of course the Roland MT32 for both the PC and the IBM PS2 with the micro channel. So yeah, I remember actually having this booklet back in the day. So it's a real pleasure seeing it. MS-DOS magazines and newsletters. There is so much here to explore. Let's have a look at this one, the computer gaming world. And look at that. So the quality of the scans is really good. You can zoom right in and see all the detail. And this just takes you back in time. Back in those days, magazines was the go-to source of information and totally different to now where everything is online at your fingertips. So without even checking out games, you can spend days just having a look at all these uh, catalogs, magazines and books. Let's have a look at playing some games. You need to install games. That's very important. So let's check out a game that I haven't played in a long time. It is this one here, James Bond Stealth Affair. And what is nice, once you click on a game, you will see some information here on the right side, some screenshots of the game and yeah, some uh, information, release date, what music devices are supported and so on. And then we can right click on the game and there are a couple of options, installation, configuring, you can edit some of the metadata. There are also extras like the copper protection, the reference card. So let's just click on that. It's a scan of the reference card, the user manual, how to play the game, so to speak. And some games have a lot of documentation. Wing Commander is an example. It's got uh, all the original scans included. So let's install the game, right click, install, and we will get asked, would you like to install the game? Yes. And then we get asked again. This is the global config, window mode, medium resolution, 1080p, aspect creation on. 
and then it asks us would you like to change any of these my answer is no i'm happy with the global settings would you like to change your graphics filter no and off it goes and then it launches the game so we are in window mode and there are two versions so this is where i'm really fascinated every time i test the game uh, we have two versions here one released in the us and one released in the uk i wasn't even aware of that um, so there might be differences in in the actual game so well i'm from europe let's go with option two and here we can choose ega or vga with sound blaster or mt32 so again it gives us all the options without us having to worry about how do i configure the mt32 how do i launch the game with ega or vga simple questions so we're going to go with four vga and mt32 and off we go it's running perfectly with the music working everything looking fantastic <laughs> Monkey Island 2 is another good example to show you just how much detail went into putting this together. So I've installed the Secret of Monkey Island and Monkey Island 2 and when you click on the game what I really like is it plays uh, some of the game music in the background. So uh, even before launching the game it already sets the, the mood so to speak. Yeah, You can look at some of these screenshots and get you excited and yeah we're clicking on monkey island 2 and then the music changes to the second game and i've already installed it so let's play the game we get uh, the usual option do we want to play in dosbox or scum vm we choose dosbox of course and then we're getting all these options so here we have the talkie edition this is interesting so later the game was released with a modern launcher and digital speech and the community figured out how to put this into the dos version i want to play option number two which has the roland music and sound blaster for sound effects here we get the copy protection which has been removed so we can just enter some random numbers and this screen, I haven't seen this in a while. So I own the Monkey Island 2 version from GOG and they do supply executables. So you can play it on a DOS retro PC, but it's based on a newer version, which doesn't have the light mode. So it says here, I've never played an adventure game before. I'm scared. This is a much easier version. And this is the version I would recommend playing if you're new to DOS gaming and you're new to point and click adventure games the full version of monkey island 2 can be quite difficult and yeah in many versions you don't get the option to play the light version so this is really interesting and awesome to see and of course we're getting the beautiful roland mt32 music in this game it's really well done depending on which rooms you go here in this part of the game the music will change just a little bit you know the main theme is still the same, but you get a slightly different variant. So this is very well done and shows you the MIDI technology in a really good light. What I like to do is test games that I know really well. And that gives me a good idea of yeah differences. Is everything configured correctly? What's going on? And a really nice surprise when I checked out Tomb Raider. We're getting the 3DFX support, which is awesome. But there is also, look at that, Tomb Raider Enhanced with the PlayStation style audio. So I believe the CD audio tracks for the PlayStation version were different, I believe superior. And it's really nice to see that in here as well. Many DOS games are speed sensitive. Wing Commander is, yeah, it's well known in the community. So let's check it out. It even has some cheats enabled. I didn't even know this game had cheats so let's play wing commander option number three with the roland mt32 here the game is loading and we can see at the top the cycles right up here 3000 cycles so that is the speed of yeah a slow 386 i believe 
in in my experience the cycle speed is a touch on the slow side for this game but slow is good wing, Com wing commander is a game that can be quite difficult to play if the machine is too fast so let's quickly launch the game and i will show you so if you want to change the speed the shortcut was control f11 and f12 so f11 will make the game even slower you can see how it's lagging now whereas i feel it's around yeah three and a half to four thousand is a good cycle speed for this game and the beauty is you can do this on the fly and wing commander is a good example later in the game you will face huge battleships where the frames the fps really tanks and then you might want to increase the cycle speed What I do with my YouTube channel is a lot about sharing the passion for old games like for DOS or Windows 98, but it's also about the hardware and building real retro gaming PCs and then running games on those machines. And the problem is when you buy a digital re-release, it often doesn't work on a retro PC. The, the seventh guest is a good example. This was one of the first CD-ROM games and when it came out it had really impressive uh, graphics and sound and the GOG release unfortunately uses SCUM VM it does not provide the executable files it also doesn't provide the original CD images so we can't burn it onto disk and play them on our real retro PC and this is probably beyond the scope of what uh, EXO or this project is all about but we can dig behind the scenes and get access to those image files. So to do that, we right click on the game, file management, and then open game folder. And here we have a DOSBox config file. And if we scroll down, we can see the image mount command, which mounts two image files. So they're located under Exodos seventh guest CD. So we have to go back out exodus seventh guest cd and here we go this is the bin and q image file for the first disk and here for the second disk and yeah all we have to do is burn these onto a cd and then we can play them on our real retro pc and this is also a huge aspect of the exodus project which is preservation and giving us a chance to play these games in a way that is original and authentic and not being uh, told by uh, these re-release versions how we should play these games and yeah definitely this is a huge benefit. Exodus uses many different versions of DOSBox to get the most out of each game. In version 6 we have a new addition with DOSBox staging you can see the option here pixel perfect and shader options and let's say no we don't want to reconfigure but here choose option number two for the shaders and we can use the adaptive CT shaders recently i've been showcasing them a lot on the channel let's have a look at test drive 2 a game using ega graphics with those thick scan lines so I can't stress enough how impressed I was with the level of detail that each of these games received. So I feel like I've only scratched the surface of what this project has to offer. There are only so many games I know, but there are many, many others that I want to check out. And like I said, I actually didn't end up playing too much. I was just browsing and looking at the books and the cover arts and listening to the music. and. Yeah, if you want to 
go back in time and relive some of those happy memories and get you excited, you will also find this project really awesome. I really like this project because it spreads the love about playing old DOS games. It removes the barriers of entry, making it easy to focus on the games. And the more people get interested and curious about these games, well, some of you might want to build a real retro PC and then you can check out my YouTube channel or many other people out there who do similar videos about restoration or building retro DOS PCs. So this is where my personal interest for this project comes into play. And yeah, it's also for me really nice to just try out some games that I haven't played before without really needing to hunt down a version and then seeing if it's available on GUG and then trying to figure out how can I make it work on a retro PC. So yeah, this project also helps me a little bit behind the scenes making this YouTube channel run a little bit smoother. EXO, if you're watching this video, I'm really impressed and I can't believe how much work you've put into this project and there are many people out there that really appreciate your hard work and yeah, you're giving people some happy memories. Go back in time, reliving those memories from our childhood, from our teenage years and yeah, that is absolutely beautiful. So guys, there you have it. That was my take on the Exodus project, specifically version six, which recently launched. And now I want to hear from you. What is your opinion of this project? Some of you left a comment in, in previous videos and that's why I wanted to check it out. So leave your thoughts down below in the comment section. I always look forward to reading them, getting up early in the morning, grabbing a coffee and then checking out all your thoughts. And that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.